And today we're going to talk about a nice strategy to solve these problems that are presented with words. And we're going to learn about a fancy word called schema. Can you say that with me? Schema. And a schema means a problem type or a method for solving a specific type of problem. Now you've been working on solving word problems probably since what? First grade maybe? First grade, second grade, third grade? Yeah? So you've been doing it for a long time. But today I'm going to talk to you about solving word problems in a slightly different way than you've ever thought about them before. And that's by using schemas. So we're going to go ahead and learn about these different types of schemas, and then you're going to practice solving some problems with me. Now when we learn about these schemas, the one thing that we all need to use, regardless of what type of problem it is, is we need to have a strategy for solving a word problem. And the strategy that your school is going to use is a strategy called UPS Check. Have you heard about this one before? Yeah, so I, I see some heads shaking, yes. So it's UPS Check. Say that with me. UPS Check. And each of those letters, the U, the P, and the S, they all stand for a different word. So the U means understand. And when I understand a problem, that means first I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to tell myself what that problem means. Then I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to do the P. I'm going to plan and figure out what type of problem this is, what's the schema, and then I'm going to make a plan for solving the problem. Then I go to S, which means I'm going to solve it. And then at the end, what do we always do in math after we've figured out the answer? We always go back and check, check our work. So that's the last part of the UPS check. All right, so we've got our UPS check, and we've got our schemas, and now we're going to put those together. And so we are going to learn about different ways to think about word problems. You all have a page that looks like this. Mine will pop up here in just a minute. Does your page look a lot like mine? Yes. Yeah. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn about the schema of total. So I'm going to just put a star up here. And we are going to write in this column and this column only for right now. First thing I'm going to do is talk about what is a total problem. Then you're going to write an example. Then I'm going to talk to you about an equation, an equation that you can use to solve a total problem. And then I'm going to show you a graphic organizer. And then we'll put all of that together and we'll solve a total problem all together. Are you ready to start this? Yes. All right. So we are talking about total problems. And in a total problem, you have parts. And those parts are put together for a total. So in a total problem, we have parts. What do we have? Parts. And what do we do to those parts? We put them together for a We have parts put together for a total. Say that with me. Parts put together for a total. Now, I like to use a lot of words in math. And I like to use a lot of numbers in math. But you know what else I like to use in math? I love to use my hands. And that helps me think about what a total problem is. So when I always talk about a total problem, I always say that there are parts. And I use my hands stretched out like this to describe those parts. And then those parts are put together. So what can I do with my hands? Put together and combine them for a total. So I want you to practice with me. A total problem is parts put together for a total. I want everyone to practice with me. Parts put together for a total. And that helps me think about what's going on in a total problem. So we've talked about parts put together for a total, but now I'm going to talk to you about some of the word problems we might see that classify as a total problem. So up here, in the, where it says total missing, here's a word problem. Emily saw four cardinals and five blue jays. How many birds did Emily see? This is a total problem because I have a part of blue jays, and I have a part of cardinals, and the question is asking me to find what? The total. I have to find the total number of birds. So I have two parts, and I'm putting those together to find the total. 
But we can also think about total problems with the problems that are down here at the bottom. And these are total problems where I'm given the total, and we have to find one of the parts. So for example, Emily saw nine birds. That's telling me the total number of birds that Emily saw. Then the problem says, if four of the birds were cardinals, how many were blue jays? So this is also a total problem, but it's a little bit different. Because this time, instead of telling you the parts and asking you to find the total, this problem tells you the total and one of the parts, and your job is to find the other part. And the problem here at the bottom is the same way. Emily saw nine birds. If, <coughs> excuse me, if five of the birds were blue jays, how many were cardinals? Four. Yeah, so here's all we know with me. So you're figuring out, did you find the total or did you find the part? The part. Well, we were given the total of nine birds and you one. were finding one of the parts. So in a total problem, go ahead, you're gonna pick up your pencil and you're gonna write a definition for a total problem. And a definition for a total problem is in a total problem, I have parts put together for a total. So I'm gonna go ahead right here where it says definition and then under total, I'm going to write parts put together for a what? For a, a total. That's right. Parts put together for a total. And now let's write an example of a total problem. And I could write the example about the birds. I could say, Emily saw four See, she saw four blue jays and five cardinals. How many birds did Emily see? And that helps me remember that this is the total problem type. So as you're writing, this will help you remember that this is all about a total problem. So a total are parts put together for a total. What's a total problem? Parts put together for a total. What's a total problem? Parts put together for a total. I want you to say it in a whisper voice. And now I want you to say it in your lowest voice possible. Parts put together for a total. Oh, lower people. Parts put together for a total. All right, we've got our total problem there. Now, to help solve total problems, because that's what we're working toward, we need some organizational strategies. And we can, I have two that we can use. The first one is we can use an equation. An equation is anything that has an equal sign in it. And I'm going to write a, what I call my total equation of P1 plus P2 equals T. And that's part one plus part two equals the total, and T stands for total. Now some of you may want to use equations to help organize your word problems, but I'm guessing that some of you like to draw pictures. Am I right? All right, let me show you how you can draw pictures to help solve this type of math problem. And this is pretty, pretty cool, pretty easy. Square plus square equals square. I think all of you can draw that. And I can label these as P1 or part one plus part two equals the total. And how can I use that to solve a total problem? Because two parts are put together for a total. So P1, part one, P2, part two, put together for a total. So now we have all of our information about a total problem. So let's work on solving a total problem together. So I want you to go ahead and just pancake flip your paper over. And you're going to see a problem here at the top. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to work on problem A. Go ahead and circle problem A so that we're all looking at the same problem at the same time. Now, this is a word problem. And it's a total problem. I'll go ahead and tell you all that so we kind of are all on the same page. And we'll talk about why it's a total problem in just a minute. But a little bit earlier I said that any time we see a word problem, we have to have a strategy for solving that word problem. And our strategy is 
U. Does anybody remember what comes next? P, S, and then C or check. I'm going to use a check mark. U, P, S, check. So what I would like you to do next to your word problem is go ahead and write UPS check there. Because that's going to help me remember all of the steps for going through this word problem. All right. Now UPS check, check is, uh, underline is first. Sorry, my voice is a little raspy today. Um, not underline is first. Understand is first. And to understand a word problem, that means that I am going to read the word problem. All right? So I'm going to read this problem. I would like you to put your finger on the first word and read, uh, use your finger and follow along as I read this aloud. Mr. Jones has eight pet crickets and three pet fish in his classroom. He also has six plants. How many pets does Mr. Jones have in his classroom? Now the other part to understand is I want you to say in your own words what you're trying to figure out in this word problem. So go ahead, and if you need to read the word problem again, that's fine. And then with the classmates at your table, I would like you to tell them what you're trying to find in this word problem. Go ahead and share. <coughs> Sorry. is about what? It's about, it's, we might use addition. What's, what's going, are we, is this problem about dinosaurs? No. no. What's this problem about? Pets. pets. So I'm going to go ahead and underline pets so that I remember that this problem is about pets. All right? So now I've done the U. I understand the problem. I read it and I said it in my own words. I know I have to figure out the number of pets. Now I'm going to go to the P, which stands for plan. And this is where I figure out what type of problem this is, what type of schema, all right? And we've learned one so far, so it's going to be pretty easy. Is this a total problem where we have parts put together for a total? Yes, it is. Why is this a total problem? Who can tell me? Why is this a total problem? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have how many pets there are. So we need to figure out the total number of pets, right? And we're given the parts, and we have to find the total. So this is a total problem. So I'm going to draw my total picture to help me organize this total information. And I'd like you to go ahead and draw this total picture with me. Square plus square equals square. And I'll label those as P1 plus P2 equals T. Part one plus part two equals the total. All right, now I have my plan. So I'm going to go ahead and check this off on the side. And now I move to S, which is solve. So now we're going to plug in the information and we're going to solve this problem. I'll start reading at the beginning. Mr. Jones has eight pet crickets. Hmm, I just found a number. Do you think I might need that number? Yes. Why do I need the number eight? What is eight talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. And those are pets, right? You told me this problem is about pets. So I'm going to check off eight, and eight is one of my parts. So I'll go ahead and check it off and write it in the P1 box. Now I'll keep reading. And three pet fish. Oh, I came to another number. Do I need that number? Yes, why do I need this number? How many fish she has. And it's a pet, right? And so we're talking about pets. I'm going to check that pet off and write that into the second box. So I have my pet crickets and my pet fish. Let's keep reading. He also has six plants. There's a number. Does that six, is that a number that we need? Yes, sir. No. Why don't we need that six? Yes, ma'am. Because it's a 
plant, not a pet. We're not talking about plants. Does the question ask how many plants does he have? No. What could I possibly do to something that I do not need to feed? What could I do? Yes. I love that suggestion. Let's cross it out. Just going to go ahead and just draw a few lines through it because I do not want to put that six into my work. Because if I put that six in there, is my answer going to be correct? No. All right. Because we're only talking about what in this problem? Pets. We're not talking about plants. No plants. All right. So now I need to figure out how many pets does Mr. Jones have in his classroom? I don't know the total just yet, so I'm going to mark it with a question mark, all right? Because that's what we need to find. <clears throat> now it is time for us to finish solving 8 plus 3 equals question mark. What does 8 plus 3 equal? Someone raise their hand and tell me. Yes, sir. 11. 8 plus 3 is 11. And so question mark equals 11. And here's the thing about word problems. I always need to have a label. I can't let that 11 just hang out there by itself. So what are we talking about in this problem? 11, everyone? Pets. pets. That's right. So I'm going to write the word P-E-T-S, 11 pets. And you know what's a really nice, helpful thing to do for your teacher? Is to circle your answer so they can find it. Because there's a lot of work down there, and you always want to make sure and say, hey, teacher, here's my answer. My answer is... 11 times. So we did the U, the P, and the S, and now we need to check our work. We can check our work by plugging this in. Does 8 plus 3 equal 11? Yes. And does that make sense? If Mr. Jones has 8 pet crickets and 3 pet fish, does it make sense that he has 11 total pets? Yeah. All right. So congratulations. You just solved your first total problem. Very nice job. Now remind me again, what is a total problem? It's Two parts. parts. What do we do? Combine them for a total. total. 